Welcome back to today's program's final segment here on the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Wu Rei Guo. We will continue our conversation with Dr. Paul Lin Bao Shu, who is the former Director General of the Information and Communications Research Laboratories at ITRI here in Taiwan. Dr. Lin, drawing on your 30 years working experience in the telecom industry, yeah. what would be your assessment and recommendations in order for Taiwan's telecom industry to stay competitive and to become more of a force on the international stage in the coming years? Okay, there are several things. Yes, are very important. Mm -hmm. Telecommunication talent. Yes, is the essential part. Yes, because telecommunication involved in the service sector and mm -hmm. also in the uh, si uh, in the system manufacture. Okay, and uh, the fast growing of wireless communication or mobile communication, mm -hmm. uh, particularly get into four G first generation mm -hmm. and for first generation in, involved in two major standards one is so-called 3GPP LTE mm -hmm. long-term evolution okay the other one is WiMAX okay those two are compete each other for the, uh, for the standard of position. 4G <laughs> yes and uh, Taiwan is in good position because for the past five years Taiwan government focused in the WiMAX development, mm -hmm. so it produced 10 billion NT this year, mm -hmm. la last year, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. The technology involved from WiMAX can be used in the LTE almost 80% to 90% okay. uh, similar. Mm -hmm. I think that the challenge is the technology development we develop for service and uh, system has to be trial in Taiwan first. Okay. And so the system integration for the uh, telecommunication services is very important. Mm -hmm. We should use Taiwan base as a trial mm -hmm. before we move to the global market. Okay. Instead of just continue to do OEM and ODM mm -hmm. to push the informationization for the other country. Mm -hmm. We have to push the informationization and the intelligence of Taiwan. Okay. And also, Dr. Lin, in addition to your uh, responsibilities, among the many of them you, know, you hold, you also are the uh, chief director of the Microelectronics and Information Systems Research Center here at the National Zhao Tong University. How do you then teach your students you know, at the graduate and undergraduate levels you know, for the research to be more compatible with what industry needs are? How do you coordinate between the two? I think uh, I'm quite new to National Jiao Tong University mm -hmm. and as the uh, chair professor of uh, computer science mm -hmm. and also the chief director of uh, MIRC, mm -hmm. Microelectronic and Information Research Center. Mm -hmm. uh, I graduated from uh, National Jiao Tong University back in 1970 mm. and uh, got my master from same university in 1973. Mm -hmm. And uh, since that, I worked two years as an instructor for National Jiao Tong University. Okay. So before I end my professional career, mm -hmm. I would like to uh, join National Jiao Tong University to end, mother. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. to end my professional career. But you're many years away before retirement. Yes. <laughs> so the president of National Jiao Tong University, Professor Wu, mm -hmm. asked me to, to be the head of MIRC, mm -hmm. and I accepted. And he wanted me to... Mm -hmm. Focus in the program he sponsors. He initiates so-called diamond program. Diamond program. Okay. And uh, he want to encourage the ex excellent area at National Jiao Tong University to get sponsorship. Okay. From leading brand okay. of the industry. Okay. In the communication and, and information area. He he ex expect to establish four to five 
research laboratory. Okay. One is information and communication research okay. laboratory. That's okay. why I'm heading right now. Okay, good. And okay. Uh, last week we passed the uh, advisory board of Diamond Program yeah. for it's National terrific. Journal yes. in University. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he encouraged to have the advanced research mm -hmm. work together with the industry. Mm, okay. So yeah. All right. the academia should not isolate itself to yeah. do the mm -hmm. blue sky research. We have to uh, leverage the industry okay. for the academia mm -hmm. uh, R&D program. Okay. So do you have some ongoing projects that are you know, jointly you know, conducted with uh, you know, the telecom industry or some of the name brands? Currently, the IC, ICTL, mm -hmm. Information and Communication Technology Lab, mm -hmm. sometimes we call Zhi Tong Si Yan Si, we got commitment from Media Tech, like Lianhua Ke, mm -hmm. and also Zhonghua Telecom. Oh, okay. And our, also some other leading brand okay. company, like ASUS. Okay, yes. And uh, sure. also yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Delta. Okay. Some of them we are working on projects together already. Project. Yeah. Some of them are still working on mm -hmm. uh, the proposal. Okay. Good. Yeah. So. But that will continue to be your focus. You know, how yes. you want to manage this laboratory, yes. you know, research center. Yeah. And uh, if you can share with us, you know, since you've been in the telecom industry for over thirty years, uh, you've had positions both in the research area as well as in the application area. And most importantly, you are also an important you know, participant in government policy area as well. Then how do you then you know, see the future of the research in the telecommunication industry? And if you can share with us, you know, what are some of your visions of your future research? Okay. I think I can give you the example mm -hmm. of the Information and Communication Technology Lab Okay. The area we are involved, there are five areas. One is 4G communication. 4G, okay. 4G wireless communication. Mm -hmm. The other, the second one is the fu future internet. Okay. Future internet meaning? Uh, For IP version 6. Okay. Machine to machine communication. Oh, okay. okay. The okay. third one is cloud computing. Okay. And the internet of things. Okay. The mm. fourth one is the uh, smartphone and next generation PC. Oh, okay. And uh, the last one is ebook and reading. Okay. So because those those mm -hmm. five areas are related to each other. Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for those four five area, National Science Council also have some kind of deployment program. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sponsor National Jiao Tong University mm -hmm. to involve in those area. Mm -hmm. So we we want to use this as the seed. Uh, money to explore the uh, cooperation, collaboration with uh, leading industry. industry. Mm -hmm. And also, Dr. Lin, you had mentioned earlier about you know how we going to emphasize on the software development and also the application of the telecommunication technologies in the future. Then, how do you anticipate based on the vision of your research, you know, uh, that you've identified for us? How do you then foresee that the development of the telecom industry technology in the future, uh, how would they create some important impacts on our lives, daily lives, on the daily lives of ordinary people? Uh, how would they make their lives better or is it going to make their lives different? Uh, how would the you know, difference come about? Yeah, I think uh, uh, there is a term so technology has related to the consumer. Yes. Consumer doesn't care what kind of technology embedded. Yes, they want uh, to be easy to use mm -hmm. and uh, impact their daily life. Mm -hmm. And uh, to so make it more convenient, more, make yeah. it more, more convenient and yes. uh, easy to use. Mm -hmm. So the next generation wireless communication doesn't care if it's WiMAX or LTE, as long as you can make some application that make consumers' life mm -hmm. uh, more smart, 
and more intelligent. Mm -hmm. I think that's what telecommunication uh, product mm -hmm. impact the daily life of a consumer. Yes, and how can we as ordinary citizens prepare for the coming impact of this continued developments and breakthroughs in the telecommunication technology? How can we prepare for it? I think uh, someday in yes. high-speed rail, mm -hmm. you, will have, you will be able to access broadband internet uh, while you are sitting in the uh, high-speed rail. Yes. And uh, as, the as the matter of fact, men in China, they are going to build several high-speed rail. Yes. I, if I, I'm correct, it will be nine. Mm -hmm. And they are thinking about to have a broadband wireless access technology, such as WiMAX, okay. to uh, so. associate with the high-speed rail co yeah. construction. So some of the things that we used to see in Hollywood movies will become a fact of life in the coming years, yes. especially in the telecom you know, uh, area in the future. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. I think, for example, in the e-book area, yes, you 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 can read mm -hmm. article mm -hmm. or magazine. Yes, not only for the uh, dedicated e-book such as Kindle mm -hmm. or Sony's yes. e-reader. Yes, you also can can do it while you are using smartphone. Yes. Well, that's very convenient. That certainly makes a lot of difference in people's life. Yes. I want to thank Dr. Paul Lin you know, for being a special guest on our program today here on the Taiwan Outlook. And we wish you all the best professionally and personally. Thank you for thank the you. invitation. Thank you. I want to thank you for watching our program today. I'll see you next time on the Taiwan Outlook here on Macroview Television. I'll see you. Bye-bye.